Agents Podcast. Welcome back, Lab Code Agents, to another episode of the Lab Code Agents Podcast. And I am personally selfishly excited today uh, because our guest today is a digital marketing entrepreneur, a social media expert. He is the founder of a platform called Lead Role, which is a LinkedIn lead generation service. Also got a platform called Role Social. If we have time, we'll get into that, which is kind of done for you social media marketing service. And we all know, listen, uh, there's a lot of these services out there. It's getting noisier and noisier. There's more and more social media gurus, social media experts. I am admittedly one of them. And I don't know that I really qualify some days. Uh, and, and, and I think Tyler Kemp, our guest today, is going to allow me to have a barometer on my own skills. But most importantly, it's going to give you a barometer on your social media strategies, on your brand, and how you can elevate it. He's got this formula called FIRE, and it is F-I-R-E, frequency, intimacy, relevancy, and efficiency. Oh, efficient is what it says, but I'm going to go with efficiency. It's efficiency. So, Tyler Kemp, <laughs> let's jump into it. Welcome to the show, and let's, uh, let's give our audience some, let's give them some FIRE today. How about that? Oh, man, I am excited to uh, to be chatting with you today, Jeff. Really, really excited. I think we, uh, we're we living in a time of opportunity, but also a time of, of so much information is really hard to sift through and figure out what the heck do we actually need to be doing to make sales and not be distracted and not uh, make these, these, these pivots that are actually going to sabotage our results and our success because there's just so many voices in the room. Mm -hmm. Amen. So Amen. I'm very much looking forward to kind of seeing how can we tactically break down, you know, what, what's really working? Like, what can an agent do? Like, what can you take away from this? Like, what's the one thing or two things you can really take away and actionably affect your sales today? Awesome. Um, so that's what I want the listeners, you know, if you're listening to this right now and you're thinking, why should I stick around to the end? Well, hopefully we'll have some, some insights that you can actually go take action on, do, and make more money. I love it. I love it. So let's start though with uh, your background. Like who the heck are you? Where do you come from? Like what, what led you to where you are today? Yeah. So I run uh, a couple seven figure agencies um, and my background, oddly enough, really, I started out in real estate space, um, not as a realtor, but uh, in really a bunch of, or a bunch of hats. And um, I ran my first company back when I was 22 uh, ages ago, and I'm in my 30s now. And um, it was, again, in the real estate sector, ran that for a couple years, uh, cut my teeth, trying to figure out how the heck do I make this whole digital marketing thing work and the sales thing work. And, um, and it's exhausting. I think the more, the deeper you go, sometimes you're just like, man, there's so much stuff and there's so much like manipulation in the market. And there's so much like, you know, act now. And like the, that, that it's hard to know what's real. Um, so I found that to be true. I eventually went on to, uh, join a mortgage team actually. And, uh, one lender and I, he was, uh, originating the loans and I was bringing in the business. We were doing 120 million a year in loan volume, um, growing 20% year over year, which is great. Um, really crushing it around 420 units a year. Um, and then I went on to be on the marketing advisory board of a $16 billion mortgage company. That's Guild Mortgage. If you know how I know them. Um, so I was uh, in charge of helping them kind of figure out some, some direction and uh, give a producer's voice to the room. And then I went on to work for HomeBot and helped HomeBot, uh, which is obviously that software company that uh, it provides a really interesting, unique dashboard to homeowners, um, help them grow from 60 grand a month to 200 grand a month in about eight months of working together. I was actually their very first growth hire. Um, and from there went on to launch a lead role, which uh, we've, we've grown substantially uh, over the last several years. And uh, we don't just work for, for realtors. <laughs> we actually, um, I would say our, 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 our market is high ticket, high ticket 
um, businesses of all kinds. And uh, we work with a lot of startups. We work with um, venture backed companies, folks from Y Combinator, 500 startups, Sequoia Capital, I mean, you name it, and uh, hundreds of, of different kinds of businesses. And we guarantee booked appointments on their calendar. So that's what we do at Lead Roll. Um, and we do also work with, with uh, real estate agents, but it's got to be a very particular kind of person right? Very particular kind of, of, of a realtor. Um, so to that person today, I think we'll have a lot of value. I love it. I love it. Well, that's, that's a, that's a hell of a checkered past um, and, mm -hmm. and good one, a good one, especially relevant to our audience, which is great because that's obviously very important. Uh, and I think Tyler, uh, when, when it comes to marketing uh, strategies in general, when it comes to social media, I tell people all the time, like real estate is light years ahead of pretty much every other industry. Generally speaking, um, they tend to be the ones adopting these strategies first. You, you see like car sales and insurance and, and, and uh, financial planners and things like that. It just takes them years. Even mortgage is behind real estate technically, really, um, when it comes to video, when it comes to social media. Why do you feel like that is? And that is a compliment to all of our listeners. Uh, however, if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, crap, I'm not doing a lot of that. I guess I need to get with the times. Why do you feel like, why do you feel like that? And being that you work with a lot of industries, what, what's your take on that? Yeah, man. It, so it's interesting um, because I think you're, you're right. Your average real estate agent listening to this right now is probably not thinking, man, I'm ahead of the curve. I think they're probably thinking that I, you know, I'm, I'm going to these lunch and learns trying to figure out what I need to do in my marketing. And I'm listening to this, you know, everyone's got a, you know, social media, a local social media guru they're listening to, and they've got a local like, oh, they do websites. And now it's all about SEO. And now it's all about this. I think that the hardest thing is just to not be distracted. And honestly, to treat, uh, there's a big difference between a business and a hustle. And I think the hardest thing to do is treat your real estate business like a true business and not like a hustle. Um, and why is real estate hard, farther ahead? I think it's because in some ways it's, it's a harder ocean. It's a, it's, there are places in real estate, it's like a red ocean. You've got, you've got to be better. You've got to, you know, there's, there's 14,000 lenders in Denver who have produced a single deal this year. Um, so if you have any chance, you have got to, you've got to be a revolutionary. It's getting harder. Um, if you're not careful, you'll get, uh, I say this tongue in cheek, I don't want to get sued here, but you'll get Zillowed, which kind of means you're going to be stuck on the, on the Zillow bandwagon forever where like you can't generate a deal unless it's from Zillow because there's, you know, it's just getting harder and harder to command attention. Um, a personal phrase of mine, you call it a tagline, is own attention, own the market, right? You've got to uh, really be a master of sales and a master of marketing um, to compete in this kind of a in this kind of a space. And you know, do you have to? No. I mean, you can you can rely on your uncle and your your friends and your well, heck, even your your sphere and referrals that'll be enough to make you happy and fed and you're, you're doing business. Um, what's really hard to do is to get to that next year where I'm no longer reliant on that. And, and lenders probably just don't in insurance agents and financial advisors, they probably just don't invest the as much time in learning and uh, self-educating and trying to become masters of their market as real estate agents do. I love it. I love it. So and I, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, agree with you more. Uh, and frankly, in fact, it's ironic. I just had a, a message from someone yesterday who is ironically in car sales said, can you help me with video? We have a video school. And I said, one of the biggest things you're going to have to overcome, and I'm, and I'm speaking to the, our audience here is, is that, and this is what I told her was that I said, the gray hairs of your industry are going to beat you down. They are going to criticize you. They're going to tell you you're doing it wrong. And you have to 
just power through, like persist, ignore it, know what you're doing is the right thing for long longevity, for sustainability, uh, and for success, right? To attract business versus constantly, ch- like you said, uh, I call it chasing business. That's the Zillow. That's the being Zillowed. Um, and so that's what we want to teach. I think that's what you want to teach. We want to teach to our audience today, which is how do you attract? How do you do it effectively to bring in the leads and make more money? Right. So let's let's get into that. Where do you yeah. want to start? Yeah, man, <laughs> there's so many things we could talk about today. Uh, so I'll do my best to keep us focused or keep me focused um, <laughs> because there's so many angles, man, that we could take on this. Um, and holy cow. I mean, you think again, sometimes I think when we're, when we're processing marketing talk and, and stuff, it's like where we've just got this loading screen in front of us for days. Cause it's just like processing, processing. Cause there's so much information to take in. Um, so I want to avoid that. I want to avoid the guru information overload, but I also want to make sure that if possible, we can, we can go deep enough to make this truly valuable, right. For free today. So, um, I would say one of the best things, I think we should start here. What's, what's going wrong in the industry and what can maybe be improved? Do you think that's a decent place? Perfect. Like what, what could, like, what are some landmines that a real estate agent might be really finding themselves, uh, accidentally stepping on and how do we avoid them? Perfect. All right. Let's roll. Let's, let's start here. I think that the biggest landmine of this year is a reliance on scrappy solutions. This is my opinion here, but I, I see this big trend in the real estate industry. The trend is this. I'm going to go find the cheapest all-in-one solution that's just going to handle my marketing and it's just going to handle it all and it's going to do all these cool things and it's got these neat widgets and bells and whistles and it's it's like you know whatever the latest and greatest thing is and i know that if you're a real estate agent listening to this right now you know what i'm talking about because they pitch you every day it's Mm -hmm. like you get new emails every day of this hot new lead source and this hot new tool and this cool thing and you're like oh great another place to spend my money, another thing that's promising like crazy results. Um, like I'm going to give you a insight. So if you go to leadroll.co, our pricing is not revealed. I mean, we've got a lot of like qualifications we do, but someone can't work with us at Leadroll unless they're able to pay anywhere from six to $10,000 a month. Okay. So that's like who our market really is, is folks that are super serious about this. And uh, again, you're listening right now. Don't be overwhelmed. Like you don't have to work with us to get some serious value out of what I'm going to tell you. Um, but it's, you know, we're, we're not, we don't, we don't half-ass anything. And how do you really go into like, we're talking mega producer zone is kind of like, like, how do you do that? And if you are a mega producer, how do you go to like, I am the top? I am the top. Um, one of the things I would say is avoid being drawn in by every every trap. Like, and seriously, if someone can't show you the math, try to not buy it. If someone can't show you the math, try to not buy it. Meaning that if they can't say, hey, here's a, here's a projection on your ROI. Here's how much you spend. Here's how much we estimate conservatively you can make mm-hmm. and how you get to those numbers is through proof and case studies and different options. Um, like know what you're getting into before you invest in the next marketing thing. Does that make sense, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I, I also feel like a really critical insight here would be um, not only to be super ROI driven and ROI focused and kind of stay away from like, you know, the latest and greatest growth hack because they're going to come and go and they're going to, you know, like there is no perfect little, Oh my God, we're going to change your world for a hundred dollars a month. Like it does not exist. What does work, what does really move the needle is build your real estate business. Like a, like a startup, build it like a, a, marketing agency, build it like, you know, these high ticket consultants would build their thing because 
if you treat it like that and you, you focus on, all right, how am I going to drive? How am I going to get someone's attention? How am I going to close them? How am I going to scale this? How am I going to, you know, handle the, the different elements of a business, right? I like to, I like to, to say you need a lead generation machine. You need a lead conversion machine. You need a service delivery machine and you need a repeat and referral business machine for pillars to a very successful business that's no longer a hustle. And I also, you know, we'll throw this out there. I'm just going to like, I'm just going to puke inside Sonia today. Okay. So hopefully that's okay. But the most people are, don't have a machine in these areas. They're trading flesh for dollars. They are, they have it. They are generating leads in the flesh. They are converting leads in the flesh. They are delivering service in the flesh. And then they are actually uh, generating repeat and referral business in the flesh, meaning they're trading their time to do all of these things. They are, if someone's going to close a deal, you're getting on a call. If you're going to find a lead, you're going to go hit the streets. Instead, my suggestion here is worry about one thing or about, you know, building it from, from left to right, starting with know where you're going to get your next deal, build a machine around it, predictable. You're not the one just hustling and, and you're not relying on luck or chance and just referrals, but you're actually focusing on building something that is repeatedly bringing in new leads. And then focus on how you're going to convert them. Are you going to build a really killer website that educates, that's different from everybody else? Uh, that's something coming down the pipe for us as well. Um, pretty soon is focusing on, again, like, you know, someone's going to, someone has a serious uh, budget, but they understand like, wow, I can convert several more deals a month with a great killer website. So if I spend, you know, 10, 15 K and it's done amazing wow, I can actually convert now 20K more per month. Um, anyway, so you focus on these assets, these machines, and don't try to don't try to make a tool or a software, just do it all for you. Don't assume that your local guy just knows it all. And because he's a millennial, he understands social media marketing. Um, really give it some thought and strategy, know your plan, action the plan, and, uh, and try to, and actually invest in, in the things that are going to make you money. Um, does that all make sense, Jeff? I kind of yeah. had a yeah. number of things. I, I don't want to well, get lost in this, but no, and I want to get more into the weeds. You know, I want to get a little bit deeper on this. Cause that was kind of a nice, it's just, it was a great general just mindset. Um, but so somebody who's listening to this is saying, okay. Cool. I'm in. Right. I get it. Like uh, there is no such thing as get rich quick. We all know that. Uh, but where do I go? Where should I start? How should I start? Which platform? How do I do? Do I need to be on four or five of them? Do I need to channel it into one or two? Uh, what is your suggestion on where to where to go? Yeah. Well, man, if only if only there was an easy answer to that question. Because again, there's so many uh, things trying to command our attention, like I said, and there's so many options. Mm -hmm. um, if only there was just a Chick-fil-A where you could just buy the perfect, the perfect business plan for you. It's the right? only meal you could get, right? Yeah. Um, I, I would have to say that you know, where you start is probably by being a serious skeptic um, and questioning the 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 true validity of your marketing activities. I, I would say, let me give you some insight on my journey here. I'm gonna tell a quick like story, right? I really started out as much a very much a marketing guy, not a sales guy, um, and I had to work with producers and become a producer in my own right and like do like go through this transformation to really gain the sales mind, and the result is. I've got my hands and feet in, in both pots really deep. Um, the marketing pot and the sales pot <laughs> or bowl or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so because of that, I would say there's, there's so many marketing people that don't understand sales. So if they're telling you that, oh, you need to go buy this social media thing. In fact, I own a social media company, right? Rollsocial.co. Mm -hmm. You go there, you can spend $500 a month and get 
you know, sweet social media content that's custom and hand designed and all kinds of stuff. And it's like every couple of days, it's great. Um, good. If that's what you need and that's what you are looking for, it's a great deal. Um, however, one of my true beliefs right now, and because I'm an honest, like I'm coming at you not to sell you something, but to be truly transparent with you. I don't believe that social media content or just putting stuff out there is going to necessarily lead to more deals for you. I really don't. I think that it can help with referrals, which can lead to more deals, just staying top of mind, right? So there's some inherent value in social media content and staying top of mind with your network and things like that. But is that the first problem you really have? I'm gonna say no. Your, your real problem is not getting... Um, you don't have a flow of, of, of leads and they don't, they're not just going to come. So where do you go? We talked about chasing versus what, what is the attracting. word you use? Mm-hmm. Attracting, attracting. Mm-hmm. chasing versus attracting. I honestly believe that we are going to need both as we go into next year, chasing and attracting, but you have to chase in a different way then maybe we think maybe, you know, when you say chasing, probably even mean like your, your typical chasing. Yeah, leads. But what if you, what if you could chase and you could, you could chase at such a level that it really yielded. Cause I find when I chase, but I chase hard, you know, that's sales, right? Marketing is kind of a tract. Um, in some ways, right? Like I'm going to put out a video. I'm going to put out this thing. I'm going to send my newsletters and whatever. And and I'm going to try to like get people in to my ecosystem. Maybe I'm going to do paid ads and drive traffic to my website. That's a very attract kind of a, a, a tactic. However, maybe there's actually something to be said about chasing, but we're not talking door to door and we're not talking like calling people. I think there's a new way to cold call maybe, right? We'll just say the new cold call is actually um, really great outbound sales, outbound emailing, outbound LinkedIn, outbound, like building your, your list and your audience and narrowing on that target and doing everything you need to do to actually get someone's attention. Um, should I give an example of that? Please. So let me give you an example of like, what would you do? What could you do to properly chase um, the right way instead of chase the wrong way um, as opposed to just attract? I think what what I would do and what we kind of even do at leadroll.co is, well, we know from the start, everyone in a city we know their information. Like we actually go and we manually find this stuff and we buy it from a variety of sources. Even we will know their mortgage rate, their, how long they've been in their home, how much their house, uh, like how much equity they have. We know their email, their phone number. We know everything about everyone. We know if they like cats or dogs. We know if they, um, have a, a, a baby, we know the exact car that they have, like all of this information sucks that it's out there, you know, welcome to the world today. Right. But it is like that data exists. And what's worse is the, the lists that we accrue, they're all opt in. So people like, we actually willingly gave this information away and we didn't even know it. Um, however, knowing that that's kind of the scary world we live in people like me who try to use those powers for good instead of powers for evil. Um, you know, we, we want to actually use that data to help people. So you get the list like that. You find um, a, you pick a market like a zip code. And if someone's owned their home for five, 10 years, perhaps they're maybe likely to, to move or could be in a position to sell, put yourself in front of them in a hand tailored, non-automated way. Um, I'm sure you'd agree, Jeff, kind of the buzz of maybe 2020 and maybe even 2019, 2018, 2017 has been like automation. Mm -hmm. Um, I would have to say, and I am, I am the automation nut. I love automation. I have, if, if, uh, you know, the, the old producer 
that I uh, used to to work with when we were doing 120 mil a year uh, in volume is listening to this. He's going to laugh because of how much my opinions on this is, have actually changed over the years because it used to be automate everything. Honestly, I can tell you that the best thing you can do is be human and the more relevant and personal like you can be, that's how you're going to cut through the noise. That actually does tie into the fire formula, which we can circle back to the intimacy element, but um, like hand personalizing outreach. Someone works with us, you know, we're, we're reaching out to say 2000 of these people a month and we're handwriting them notes and we're handwriting them emails and we're handwriting like LinkedIn messages to them. And we're hand like not automating. We are, we're just, we're just doing the chase for the, for you. And we like, we, we can line up sales appointments, a lot of sales calendars, like the, like it's a Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. But so, so let's, let me ask you a question about that. So it sounds great and it sounds correct. I, I wouldn't disagree. However, how scalable is it? How scalable is, I'm not, I'm not saying, I think there's got to be a certain level of both automation with, with intimacy. Uh, but you know, at what point is the intimacy not scalable? Mm -hmm. That's always the question. That's a fantastic question, a fantastic uh, insight really to be asking. Can you scale intimacy? Um, well, you do scale intimacy through your through video, right? That's kind of like one of the, the things you've been trying to hit home with the audience for a while now is like, yes, like why does video work? Well, because it's kind of intimate, like it, it is intimate, but it is also scalable it's why it's such a beautiful thing. Um, the, there is no easy way to scale intimacy, um, at the level that we're talking about. So it has to, the way you scale is by working with professionals. That's it. Like you work with professionals who understand, um, who have already built something to scale and you, you scale it, or you build your own team out, you know, all of the elements you need to do and you section out tasks. For example, um, one way that we scale outbound email while still maintaining intimacy is this. We don't rewrite the entire email. What you need to do though is write custom, write the first line of every email. So um, we have entire staff um, who all they do all day long is hand research prospects and handwrite them a really nice customized first sentence. If somebody likes jazz, we're going to mention that they like jazz. If they are into um, something else and we could tell that maybe from their LinkedIn profile, maybe they posted something recently on this topic or that topic, we'll mention it. We'll mention that we actually read it, that we read their comment, that we, um, you know, so-and-so actually, we noticed a recommendation from somebody and they said this about them. And so we know something about their personality. So by sectioning it down and delegating um, certain parts of the process, like just writing first lines all day long and then getting it into your, your outbound process, that's one way you can scale it. Is it free? Absolutely not. Is it easy? No freaking way. Um, because there's all these other things you have to do too, to make outbound actually work, but through really tight process, intimacy can be scaled and you don't have to do it yourself. That's still the, the piece of the puzzle where it's like, not everything has to be done by you, depending on, depending on your current level and where you really want to be. Sure. Sure. Yeah, so yeah, no, it does. And I think, I think the, the, the golden nugget out of that is the scalability of, handwritten handwritten emails mm -hmm. uh is 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 getting intimate with the first line and then the rest of the body of the email is the same to everyone exactly. i think that's smart i think that's great uh now but when it comes to that so let's let's stick on that that particular topic here and and let's just say somebody um you, you know like when you're buying leads you're buying them in quantity usually uh so it's not scalable to use that tactic with that lead. That's more of a mass, in my opinion, it's a mass, uh, mass message to an existing audience that you can go stalk, 
because you might already have a relationship with them. Like, for example, your past customers, for, for example, um, you know, your SOI. But how is it that an agent could do this on their own if they were using that strategy to go after leads, which are cold? Yep. Yeah, it's very hard to get it to work for cold, but that's that's part of the magic, right? Um, I would say two things. I, I will say if someone wants information here, not you know, uh, on on a process that we use to do this, if they go to leaderroll.co, there's a thesis video that walks them through exactly how we do what we do. Um, if they want more information on like specifics, uh, and again, it's totally free, and you know they can they can take action on it and work with us or whatever if they if you want. Um, really, my goal again would just be to have you learn and, and take something useful away, and you know we have a great relationship. Um, you know, uh, can you? How do you do this yourself? You know, getting the data is hard. I would say probably you're you're right that if you don't if you don't work with kind of experts in outbound, it's going to be really hard to find the right information. I mean, we spend thousands of dollars a month per client, like two twenty five hundred dollars or more per month per client just on data, right? So if you try to implement something quite similar, like know that it's not something you're going to do unless you have um, unless you're pretty serious, right, about uh, doing it right. Um, in lieu of that, a easier way would be, yes, do it with your sphere of influence instead and, um, take your past client list and, uh, prepare a, uh, a system. What we, what we do, or at least have done, we're, we're constantly changing things up, but what you could do is take a spreadsheet and, lay out all of your past clients in a Google sheet and then make sure you have their emails and information on them there. And if you have any, any info you've got, put it all in a sheet. Um, then go through, manually write them a unique message in one of your other columns and then import that into some kind of email tool. Now, again, if you're trying to really do this, know that you cannot do this approach with MailChimp and active campaign and like your even like top producer like type tools not sure that they are uh, good for this kind of a thing I suppose maybe if you if there are a client then you can do it but you can't do it for cold you have to use different methods for cold email otherwise you'll be you run the risk of being in violation of can spam um, so yeah, take the time. You can even pay a VA to go through and like write some of these for you um, without being too expensive, but don't skimp on quality of your message because you don't want to, you know, mess with your, with your sphere and uh, have them write something ridiculous that they know is not from you. Okay. Um, so yeah, that'd be, that'd be one of the easiest ways to really tap in and like, if you were like, yeah, how am I going to generate, if I want to just generate two, three more deals this month, by doing one thing, I would say that's probably a good thing to do. Go through, maybe even record a little video, put it in the email, customize that first line so it gets their attention and um, stick it into your, your process. And hopefully that's, you know, maybe you've got a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand of these people. And uh, they'll probably really appreciate that you sent them a personalized, a personalized email. Mm -hmm. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. Sure. The tactic there, is that too complicated? No, I think on the surface, it's pretty simple. I think as far as doing it at scale, it's it's a little bit more complicated. And I think that's where probably your, your pl platform like LeadRoll probably comes into play uh, to help somebody do that. Um, so I, I don't want to beat this horse down because I, I want to give them you know something very actionable and tactical. And I wanted to ask you a question uh, on on the topic that you brought up, which was for your role social. So we all know, and I mentioned this in the beginning, and I feel like we've kind of diverted away from the social aspect of this, uh, is there are a lot of platforms out there. You're one of them where you yeah. can spend anywhere from 99 bucks to, to, to 500 bucks a month and maybe higher uh, to have done for you content. Uh, 
And as, you know, from the horse's mouth, so to speak, um, because again, I have a lot of experience in this and I'm a part of some platforms as well. You know, what is your opinion on this? Because the reality is that if you're not engaged with your social media and there's not some authenticity there, the likelihood of you having the success that you could is probably not as great. I mean, one of the reasons why I'm in the real position that I'm in is because I've done it. I'm not one of those coaches who's just very eloquent and speaks about it and can tell you what to do without actually doing it. I did it first and it really has worked for me. Um, and so I just find myself on stages and digital stages speaking about it, right? Yes. Uh, what is your opinion though of hiring? Because you know the reality is most people are not neurotic or maybe even psychotic like I am. And I actually live and breathe and love this stuff. I love creating content every single day. Most aren't. And most don't, they do want it done for you. But the reality is, do you find that they're going to have the same amount of success? So I guess the question is, is mm. you have a service. Um, what is the advice you're giving to a client who comes in and says, Tyler, I want to hire you and I want you to blow up my brand and I want you to do everything. You do this for me. What's your, what's your reaction to that? Yeah. I'm going to ask him. I'm, I'm, I want, I would want to know one thing. Why there? Why? Why there? Why now? Do you? Because because the fact is, um, like if I look back on, you know, I'm connected to a lot of top producers. I you know, uh, I know and, and and love a great deal of them. Like I was at the sales rallies. Like I've made videos for sales rallies. Like big producer only events, um, and. And if you look at their social media, they are very active, right? And also some top producers would look at me dead in the eyes and be like, Facebook is the best thing I've ever had and ever done in my life, right? And they will swear that that is like the thing that they do that just at least is so much business. Um, but they're like you, they are like into it. They kind of love it. They love the, 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 you know, engagement and they kind of like to make, they have their own style and they, um, like some people like they, they're, they're really mostly sharing in pictures of their kids yeah. and their family. Well, it's and authenticity. Not, yeah, it's, exactly. They're, they're getting, they're getting intimate. Um, and that's what does work on social in terms of like building relationships with it in a scalable fashion. It's one of the things that's great. Um, but there's also this element of like, wow, you could post, post after post after post after post after post and you didn't necessarily get a sale from it right so you kind of have to believe that it's working in order to keep doing it and you know like are you ever able to really measure like we always say like yeah it's a really hard thing to measure like someone comes to me wants to work with with us i'll tell you real social is best in breed right for the price is you really can't find anything better. Um, you know, like $99 social, some of these other guys are, are not nearly the same quality and it's like the same kind of price range. Um, and, uh, and yet I would say, yes, if someone's not doing it and they think they need to do social media, like go for it. Um, it's not going to be the same as if you're doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're, right. you're taking pictures all the time. Like if you want to be, uh, if you want to be like an influencer type person and kind of like your micro influencer in your, in your community and things like that, like there's certainly some value to, to doing that. But I also have to tell you that I personally have undergone a little bit of difference in my thinking. Um, I think that status, okay. Projecting status will lead you to not be happy. I think that imposter syndrome is a silent killer of social media. I think that sometimes like using it as a sales platform is really great, but you have to be so careful to not like put your own self-worth into anything you put out there. And also I can't tell you how much junk I see. Like, you know, every, I won't name names of brokerages, but there are, we all know the corporate social media things. And every, you know, every couple of days, every person in my network who is tapped into the same 
like social media thing posts the same exact post and it's got all these disclaimers at the bottom and all of this like you know housing rates have changed or mm -hmm. you know right. like what's going on in in whatever like it's it, doing you can't expect to do that that's filler and that's filler content that's, it's it, 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 it should be filler content anyway if it's your only content you're never going to have success you're never going to see yeah, the power of what social media could be okay yeah. so so let me ask you this so okay you, you've kind of defined that there that the anomaly is the person who truly enjoys doing it and does it every single day and it's kind of just a part of it's like a third arm right yeah but then there's everybody else yeah and so as an expert um and and you see you know clearly you are you have businesses around this you're selling it clearly people are having success with it they wouldn't buy it you wouldn't have a business if you didn't so what do you what is the advice you're giving to that listener right now who's saying okay uh, jeff yeah i do i follow you and i see you all the time clearly you're winning the algorithm game which is kind of the name of the game and it's working for you because i, I do love what you said tyler and i and I, I i say this a lot to people is that the social media strategy in quotations, is not like a Zillow strategy. It's not buy, lead, close, deal. Yep. It's not put, make, post, close, deal. It doesn't work that way. Um, and, and you're right. Like my ROI, like our business has grown hockey stick. Uh, and I we're, there's really no other thing to dial it back to other than presence, other than branding, other than like, because yes. we've grown on a national level. I couldn't do that without what, I, with, without what I'm doing. 100%. Um, so for the person who's not the anomaly, which is probably the majority, what do you suggest that they do? Because, and let's just say that like, they're sitting here listening to this thing. Okay. I, I've thought about this. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty committed. I know I need to hire a service to do this for me. Your guys are telling me this isn't going to be the done. It's not going to do everything. It's not going to make me win. What else do I have to do in addition to that? And your opinion for that non-anomaly to succeed and, mm -hmm. and, and see an ROI. Yes. And it's a good question because I mean, wouldn't wouldn't it be i think it's worth being a little suspicious in our market right to say like man like interesting that everyone everyone's talking about social media like everyone is like you know wanting some 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 quick thing and i i mentioned in the beginning that one of the biggest mistakes is finding like scrappy solutions yeah. okay so like the answer to, to this is know where everything you're doing fits in the bigger picture. You have to know very clearly what kind of result do I want if I'm going to do something like this. So if I'm going to put something on social media and I'm going to hire a second, like a service, uh, you know, a, a, something that's not going to break. A role social. A role social, right? Exactly. Dot co. You're, you're, it's not going to break your bank. It's not going to like, it's not going to like flood you with your calendar leads either. Right. It's like, you got to know what that's going to do for you right. and be okay with that particular deliverable. Like if, if you have been telling yourself the last year, Oh, I've got to post on social media and oh, I, I just got to be doing it. I'm just not. And I constantly get busy and I kind of don't like it. And I kind of, eh, you know, I think you're, that's making, majority. I think you're that's making excuses and you're just like, but you feel like you should be doing it and you want to do it. And you, you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on like, you know, copywriter and like uh, other stuff. That's uh, even then like, don't do that. Please don't do that. It's not a good idea. Um, like then use role social because you're going to get images and it's going to be different, but it's going to feel it, know that any service like that is going to feel like you're a little bit like the corporate posts a little bit, because the only difference is they're tailored maybe to your market, a little bit more to you, a bit more to your style. You can tell us like, Hey, I like these colors and I, you know, put my photo in this way and we'll custom design like your own templates and stuff. Like there's a lot of cool stuff that really does come from it. And, 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 and so I think that's, that's a great place to, to, it's a great thing to do if you are going to do it anyway. Now, but again, do I think that you as a real estate agent, that that is the thing that you're missing that you need to be doing to get to that true next level? Almost, almost never. Almost never, unless you're, I mean, frankly, look, Jeff, somebody like you or 
man, I just, I, I've got these, the, you know, their image, their faces in my mind, and their names are flooding my head right now. The, the people who are, you know, who have done kind of what you've done and like, they're super successful. They've built a real brand. I mean, they have, they have gone out and they have gone all in on branding and all in on content. And they're just like churning and burning and they're putting stuff out and you're putting your face there. Like, let me just ask you, how automated has that been for you? It's not. How hands off has that been? Yeah, definitely not. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, you cannot do mm -hmm. what you have done and be hands off. Period. It's not possible. I can't do that. Like, you you cannot. If you want to build a personal brand, get ready, buckle up. You're going to be building videos like crazy. You're going to need to be a content machine. No excuses. There is no other way to do it. There is no shortcut. Like, and if you, unless you're willing to build a personal brand, doing piffly content is going to have marginal returns. Yeah. Like, it just is. Yeah. Like, I, I would say that your best results are going to be optimizing your sales funnel, okay? Optimizing your sales process. If you're a loan realtor, a top, even a top producer, if you're not a top producer, then probably just need to hustle your ass off until you are. <laughs> and then, you know, once you hit the point where hustle isn't gonna take you any further, then invest in something like lead roll and a couple other things to really dial in the next level. But again, don't, you can't do that unless you have cash. I mean, you know, again, we're like six to $10,000 a month is not cheap jumbo change. Like you got to be pretty freaking serious before you're going to blow that kind of money on an outbound process that you know, we have guarantees and everything. So it's, it's oddly enough, when we work with someone, it's no risk because we, we make certain guarantees and like we hit it and we're contractually obligated to do certain things and it's great. But uh, so, so they make great returns. However, our thing aside, the like you need to you need to control the the lead flow and so you either need to buy those leads and focus on converting them better or following up with them better like you need to humanize the process in terms of like most most of us really stink at follow up i mean that's the biggest problem you probably have right now is you know when you get a lead you don't follow up yep. and you're not calling them and you're not emailing them and you're not hounding them until you get a no, you're a little bit afraid to have them tell you to it's, F it's, off. It's because everybody's chasing the immediate answer. And when they don't get it, it just, it, it falls into a graveyard of, I mean, you know, we all know that and, or, or they put it into an automation software and then maybe their cadence isn't correct, or maybe they're, maybe it falls off too soon. I, I you know, there's a variety of answers as to why. Yeah. Well, and, and some things cannot be automated. Like yeah. they, they can't. And, and again, I, I just have to laugh the fact that this stuff comes out of my mouth these days, because in the past it, I'm like, yeah, like automate everything, but, but the times are changing. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you're going to be more noise sometimes like automate the things that can be automated hundred per percent, but parts of your sales process will never be able to be automated. So, um, you know, focus on your, on your sales script and like focus on your album process. Like I've got a team of salespeople that work for me, um, that crush it and they're making, you know, fat cash. Um, I think like, you know, guy I brought on the other day, like made $27,000 in his first month, like, wow. you know, doing really well, people that work for, for me and they're like commission only. And like, it's, it's really interesting. Um, but you know, so we're, we got sales process down. I think if you can do that as a realtor and you dial in sales process, like, and you know where your next deal is going to come from. And literally our guy, the guy made 27 K, like all he did is all we did is plug him into the lead role process. We do the same thing for ourselves. as We do for our clients. It's literally how we get our business. Um, and just chase and chase and chase. And in some ways it's a numbers game. Like, yeah. and in some ways it's a, like, it's a, you hit a certain benchmark and then you have cash. Like if I were to build a website for somebody, for example, you know, they'd have to pay somewhere around like 15 grand. And, but what they might get is like something different, 
something really different. We're not talking about just different in design. We're talking about different in like a whole variety of ways, like something that you can send somebody to and they convert. Like, um, anyway, I don't want to, I, I apologize. I don't want to get on that, that rabbit trail. Sure. I've got my head in, in so many, like I said, my head's in so many spaces right now. So if, if you're, if you need, if you need to, if you want to get to that, like, let's just say, what do you think is a good, a good benchmark? Uh, like Jeff, where do you think is the production volume that these, that most listeners want to really get to? Well, I think, I think part of the reason why anybody's going to be doing, you know, um, following the social strategy or the concept is because they want to build a business that is more sustainable, where they can get out of the quote unquote rat race of doing the traditional things like calling expired, doing, doing the things that those brokerages that you're talking about are constantly beating in their heads. Like, listen, they're going to have to hustle to get to a point where they can do this other things, but we all know it's going to take a little bit of time. So I think that's the ultimate goal for most agents or, you know, any sales professional is how do I build this and then it will come. Mm. Right? Yeah. Like and how dreams. do I not be like everyone else? hundred percent, which is actually easier than they think when it comes to, like you said, just share your life. That's different. Your life's different than everybody else's. That's actually what your audience wants to see. Um, it's another topic for another day because yeah. we do need to wrap up, but we do. Yeah. And, but also value, right? Like the, the, the way that we approach giving value as a realtor um, is, or sorry, real, you know, real estate agent <laughs> is uh, it's going to be, you got to be smart about it um, because of the widgets out there, right? You know, because like, okay, so many people now are getting like maybe market snapshot from my, you know, sure. from the, whoever their, their realtor and their network is. And like, I honestly say like, like if there was one, thing that I don't sell that I think would really make a gigantic, crazy difference in the life of everyone listening to this. If you actually like devoted your next like three months to this, um, would be get unique on your positioning get unique on your positioning. And by that, I mean, like, okay, for example, like we have, yes, the fire formula, frequency, intimacy, relevancy, and efficiency. Like it's different. Like when you actually buy real social, you're kind of getting the fire formula. Like you're getting frequency, you're getting intimacy because it's like different and you're getting relevancy because it's like talking, you know, to a very particular kind of person in your network and you're getting efficiency because you didn't have to do it yourself. And like, you're buying this kind of method. And like, when you work with lead role, we have, we have like our signature process of like, we're so dialed on exactly what we're doing. Um, that when somebody comes in our door, they often will buy from us because we are giving away the keys to the kingdom in terms of information. We are spending like an hour, hour and a half on every sales call diving in, giving away the numbers, the math, like every objection, like handled, like nail that sales process because most people listening to this are not going to have a lead problem. They probably have a conversion problem yeah, or they have a follow-up problem. One of those two things, like oh, you, you probably have plenty of leads. You're probably just not closing enough of them. Like if you closed 5%, 10%, 15%, 20% more of your business, what would that do it would change to your lives. bottom line? Yeah, exactly. And so focus on that. Um, pretty soon in the next couple of months, you know, maybe by the time you're listening to this, we will have a, uh, a new method coming out uh, specifically around, you know, how do you build your website around, um, real sales, like how do you turn your website into a true deal closing machine by like you know, linking funnels and like doing all kinds of stuff, not scrappy. We don't use landing page builders. We are like, it's like next level stuff. Um, and we, we've got a method coming out called the convert method. And it's uh, specifically like all the copy, all the strategy, how the pages link together, how are you going to work things in? Um, 
all the way through to like your analytics and like literally micro testing. So if you had 50 people visit your website, what was their likelihood of like visiting this page and them actually converting and, 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 or like, you know, I made this change and how does it affect my metrics? Like next level stuff, mm-hmm. um, coming out here soon. So I'm really excited to, to have that. I mean, I, I don't, I'd say that, um, they'd have to find me on LinkedIn and message me if they want information on it. But, um, well, that was my next question. Like, so if anybody wants to get in touch with you, if they want to learn more, where do they find you? What's the best place or what, what, yeah, you've yeah. mentioned your websites a couple of times, but, but, uh, mention it again. And, and where's the best place to yeah, get hold of you? Let's do that. So, you know, honestly, uh, I, uh, kind of a, I'm kind of a, I try to be a little bit of a, closet CEO. <laughs> you know, my team does the selling. I don't even jump on sales calls these days. Like it's, uh, it, but what I would love to do is if somebody listening to this has, you know, any, any questions about what they can do, like I will happily, it'd be so more than happy to share what I know on a call or message them or something like that. If you find me on LinkedIn, you go to linkedin.com slash in slash TJ Kemp. You'll see Tyler Kemp. I help with growth. Um, yeah. If somebody is a top producer and, um, you know, wants to, is interested in actually taking action on, um, an outbound approach and they want to do outbound sales to literally consumers and direct to consumer outreach to like 2000 to 4,000 people. And you know, their rates and you know, their like their home value. And it's truly a numbers game. We don't know if they're interested or not, but what we do know is that you hit enough people and you're bound to find somebody who's willing to talk to you. Um, and we handwrite all those messages and we keep you out of spam. And it's a, it's a whole whirlwind of stuff. What we do, um, go to leadroll.co watch the little thesis video, see if it's something you're interested in, um, book a call, take a quiz and, uh, rollsocial.co is someplace you can go. If you want social media content, um, again, like it's, it's going to be, it's different to, from your corporate content, but it has some similar vibes. Um, it's something you, I would only, I would only suggest you do if you know that you need that and you have a small budget and you're, you kind of want something, you want a, uh, you know, some kind of branding on the regular that's not made from a robot. Um, and, uh, but you're in between and you're not quite, you're not quite at that place where you want to become the next, uh, the next Jeff Pitzer. I can never pronounce your name. You got it. You got it. That's but, right. uh, it's, uh, you know, you, you, you're in between those two points. You're then, yeah, Royal Social is going to be a, a good thing to do. Um, so that's the, that's a long version of how you can touch me. Find me on LinkedIn. I love it. I love it. Tyler, it's been great. Um, you know, when, when the new, when the new strategy rolls out, maybe circle back with me and we'll get you on again. We could talk, we can go in depth about it. I feel like we were super broad today, uh, yeah. but I think our audience could take some good nuggets from this and, and, uh, and this will help. Obviously, if you need more, you know where to go. There's bleed roll, there's roll social, there's finding Tyler on LinkedIn. Uh, so go do that. And if, of course, if you have any questions, you know, go, go find them. You guys know how to find me. Uh, we're always happy to help. Tyler, thank you so much. It's been a good, fun conversation. I feel like we could probably have this conversation for days at a time. But we could. Um, so. could go forever on this stuff, man. And I love it. I love it because I'll tell you, I'm so passionate about um, helping real estate agents. I, I just am. Like, it's a market that's close to my heart for some reason. And like, I know how hard it is to be in that place and like, like just try and figure it all out. And like, you're, you are your business. You're like doing your own sales and you're doing your own stuff and you're trying to figure out, do I build a team or not? Or do I like, you know, what the heck do I need to do? And everyone wants to sell me something like I feel for you. I honestly do. And, uh, so man, I would love to help as much as I possibly can, you know, no gimmicks with me. No, I'm not trying to sell something. I really, uh, I truly, truly want to see more realtors cut through the noise and become top producers. And really, I want to see top producers take their business to some more serious levels. That's yeah. really my thing is like someone's a producer. Yeah, like let's jump on a call and figure out if we can do anything together. Because honestly, 
Yeah. Like, you know, real next level. We're talking like, let's talk, like, what does it look like to, to literally double your production? Mm-hmm. You know, go from a hundred million to 200 million, like go from 50 million to 150 million. Sure. Like, go from six figures to seven. I imagine you've got some of those. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. If someone is less than a million in annual recurring revenue, um, they should call me. Yeah. We should talk. I mean, if they're at like 500,000 a year, 300,000, 200,000, and you want to be at a million, um, I mean, you know, the guy I was working with before he and I, I mean, I guess I, I, I can't say, I, I shouldn't say how much was made, but you know, if you're not making millions of dollars and you're a, and you want to be, and you know, you can, and you have a budget and you're willing to invest maybe a hundred K Uh, a year to make a million, then yeah, then we should talk. Love it, brother. Tyler Kemp, it's been great, man. It's been great to get to know you and uh, let's definitely stay in touch, my friend. Yeah, thanks so much, Jeff.